Okay, hello guys. Uh, my name is Michelle. I'm one of the third year registrars here. Okay, so I'm just going to talk to you about um, chest ultrasound, the common anatomy and pathology that you probably see most of the time. Okay. Right, so normal chest anatomy, like all of you know, you've got your yeah, you've got your chest wall. Okay, it would be the soft tissues, your skin, your intercostal muscles, and you see this pleural line, which you've all seen just now, and an all-important diaphragm that you've seen just now. Okay. Okay, so just looking a little bit more about the chest wall, um, you see your soft tissue layers. They're layers of echogenic soft tissue. So you've got your skin, your subcutaneous tissue, and the slightly darker intercostal muscles and fascia. You can still see a little bit of uh, echogenic layer there, but then you see the pleura as an echogenic line like that. Okay. So on, this is um, a curvilinear probe picture, so you can't really differentiate the viscera and parato pleura. And just to let you know, here you've got these sort of little reverberation artifacts here, um, which I'm sure Dr. Naseby has talked about. It's because of the quick change in acoustic impedance. So you get these sort of like mirror reflections that also helps you to identify where the pleura is. And this little cross here is a little comatel artifact, which we've spoken about. I'm going to talk it to death now. Okay, and this is where you identify the normal pleura. Okay, and again, this annoying thing is called ribs in the chest. And um, you can see this is a panoramic view of the chest. So all these little black lines are ribs, 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 and just black is behind that. Okay, and uh, this is basically taken sort of with your scan like that and with just stitching. It's like picture stitching on your digital photo, just taken down like that. Okay, and this is a longitudinal plane. So um, so you can look at the ribs either transversely or you can look intercostally <coughs> in between the ribs or you can look at the ribs themselves by placing it directly onto the rib and you'll be able to see just like uh, the anterior cortex of it but you won't be able to see anything behind that just because it's bone, it doesn't transmit ultrasound. Okay. Right, so you've all seen it just now, um, normal ultrasound anatomy, uh, transhepatic or transcostal view, uh, very nice echogenicity of the liver, you can see the hepatic veins, which are perhaps slightly dilated, um, and also your normal kidney on the right side, so again, just emphasizing, you need to find your normal anatomy, right kidney, liver, diaphragm, I know I talk about this a lot, but it's very important, and a transplanic view, left kidney, obviously, and then the spleen and you see uh, the di nice diaphragm here and also maybe a bit of rib shadowing okay and another nice four chamber view of the heart don't always see it um, I don't know who took this picture but it's a very lovely view of the heart okay and you see the nice pericardium this is normal this is a normal appearance mm -hmm. okay so moving on to the pleura uh, you've got your low frequency probe um, you'd be which is your curvilinear probe, uh, you'll be able to differentiate the pleura from the rest of the soft tissues, um, but the visceral and parato will be, appear stuck together as one layer. It's approximately about two millimeters. It's a thick acrogenic band, which you can see here, and obviously, again, you have the ribs blocking the way. And just watch where your focus is. It's quite important. <coughs> if you're actually looking at the pleura here, put your focus up. Don't leave it here or here. It's not really useful. Okay, and with your flat high frequency probe, um, if you're lucky, you can differentiate the pleura into visceral and parato pleura. Um, parato on the outer side and visceral on the inner side, and the visceral is normally the thicker one, slightly thicker. And there'll be two separate echogenic lines, and you know, if your patient is a good patient, you can see it sliding in and out. Okay, and this, again, there's a rib casting some shadowing behind. Okay, oh, it works. Right, okay, and then uh, there's a long sliding sign which a lot of us have talked about. And um, you can see the soft skin, soft tissues, and a pleura. And, and the patient breathes, and obviously the, the visceral pleura will slide. And you can see the sliding as a per, against the soft tissues. And this is have to be seen dynamically to be able to differentiate where the pleura is. Okay, right, okay. Uh, and below the pleural line, um, you've got this artifacts which we've talked about, and the reverberation artifacts. It's got a really bright echogenic line here, the change in acoustic impedance from soft tissue to soft tissue, and wham, you've got air. So you've got all these um, mirror like artifacts um, between, at the lung and pleural interface. And here you've got this little nice echogenic line here, uh, like the tail of a comet. Um, and these are basically 
um, you've got these lung pleura septa um, that are quite close to the pleura, so these are throwing off these reverberation little artifacts and they're approximately about 7 millimeters apart normally and you can see these ones here Okay, and, these, and this video here just shows cometal artifacts again you can see these little lines here moving yeah. okay everyone can see that yeah great okay uh, click Okay, and uh, moving on to the diaphragm, um, again, <laughs> uh, there will be a thick curvilinear echogenic structure, which is above, directly above the liver and spleen. Well, you don't have this. Well, it's normally above the liver and spleen. And when, when the patient breathes in and out, or when they sniff, they should move down like that. That's normal. And here you can see this kind of like white curtain coming across. That's just normal air in the lungs, and that's just covering the pleura and the soft tissue. That's normal. Okay. Now, uh, pathology, which is what you guys are all interested about. Um, first, there's a chest wall. The things that you can look for are like masses, nodes, fractures, um, although probably you would be able to see some fractures on the chest x-rays, hopefully. Um, and the diaphragm, uh, you can look for paralysis, can look for thickening, um, uh, sort of paradoxical movements, and in the pleura, you can look for effusions, which is what most of you guys want to look at. Uh, thickening of the pleura, as in mesotheliomas or other sort of uh, malignancy, and masses. Now, in the lining of the heart, the pericardium, uh, you don't necessarily always look at it, but you can have a look to see if there are any gross effusions, uh, pericardial effusions. And the lung parenchyma, which is last, uh, you can look at things like pneumonia, infections, uh, neoplasms, and pneumothorax. But just one thing about looking at the lung parenchyma, just remember it has to be abutting against the pleura. If there cannot be any air between the pathology and your, um, and your probe, uh, if there's any air, you can't see it. So anything more central, you can't actually see it, okay? All right, so number one, moving on to chest wall, soft tissue masses. Uh, they're not, the benign tissues are not entirely common. So things like lipomas and sebaceouses, uh, you might be able to see it, uh, you might not. Uh, if you feel something, poke at it, have a scan. Uh, other things are ooh, metastases, so you can get soft tissue metastases. Uh, and if you, the patient had, had trauma, it can, there could be a hematoma, and if you leave it long enough, it could turn into an abscess. So this is a Corono T1 image, and uh, it took me a little while to <laughs> actually spot this. There's this little well-defined uh, bright signal High signal? High signal lesion over here, and that's a lipoma. And if you scan it on the ultrasound, the uh, lipomas are usually quite well defined, and they'll be in the subcutaneous tissue layer rather than sort of anything deeper. So if you see that, you know, you, you can almost be sure that it's a lipoma. Just pop some color on and, you know, make sure it's not anything more malignant than that. Okay? And this ugly, ill defined, heterogeneous signal, echogenicity <laughs> lesion. <laughs> Uh, is a soft tissue metastasis. So if you see that, it's, you can't really see the borders properly. That's bad, just bad news. Um, and in the center here, this is a patient who had a fall, uh, had a swelling in the chest. So you can see that it's quite well defined, but there's sort of these anechoic bits inside and also a bit of septa, a bit of fibrin. So it's probably been there for a little while. But what you should note for hematoma is that there is actually what we call posterior acoustic enhancement. So it basically means it's brighter at the back. Um, so if it's fluid, it should let the light through, so that's quite um, typical of hematomas. Um, and if the clinicians ask, you know, could it be an abscess? Could be, don't really know. <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's collection, there's something there, and you just need to tie it in with the history. Okay, chest wall number two. Uh, notes, you might see some notes if you scan under the axilla, if you scan in the supraclavicular fossa. Um, this is a hyperplastic node right on the top here, and it's reactive, and it can get sort of bigger if they've got infection or infl inflammation around. And uh, it's oval, and it's got a fatty hyaline, nice fatty hyaline in the center. So it looks, to me, it looks a bit like American football. So American football and lymph nodes are good, and that's probably benign. Oh. Okay. Um, and it can, as compared to the ones below, it's an ugly, dark, ill-defined lymph nodes here. They're more plump, they're more rounded like British football, as much as I know about footballs. Um, and you can't really see the, the fatty hilum here. 
and borders just really sort of craggly and irregular. And if you pop the Doppler on um, in a normal highland, you can see like a nice vessel going in to feed the lymph node. But um, in a malignant one, they might have increased vascularity. They might just look different. Just something just doesn't look right. And of course, size, the bigger it is, the more likely it's going to be bad. Okay. So, um, rib fractures. Um, moving on to ribs. Uh, if, like, again, if, this is a picture of uh, scanning a rib, um, sort of end on, so rib probe. And what we're seeing here is the anterior cortex of the rib. And there's a little step here, it's called the lighthouse phenomenon. I suppose just something sticking out, but there's a gap basically. And um, you can see associated hematoma, just a little bit over here. Okay, and that's quite common if you've got a rib fracture. Okay, and the other thing would be metastases. So if you scan over it, it's a rip, 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 rip. Well, bang! There's this huge, ugly-looking thing. Um, there's a soft, there's a soft tissue um, echogenicity. So it's most likely going to be bad. It's, um, it's a mass. It's some sort of met, or you know, it just destroys the rib, and that's bad. Okay. And moving on to the diaphragm, again, we've got a nice video of um, the diaphragm moving up and down. Um, air coming here, Ooh, moving too quick. Uh, so we've got a nice diaphragm, and it moves up and down. You should expect it to move quite a bit. And on the lower picture here is a paralyzed diaphragm. So the patient's kind of trying to breathe, trying to breathe, not really moving a lot. Um, and you know, then you can start thinking about paralyzed diaphragm. Is it? Central as a peripheral, what's happening? Okay. Now, moving on to the pleural effusions, which is one of the most common requests we get. Mark X, please, for aspiration. Um, so, the classical appearance of uh, pleural effusion is an anechoic slash just black area between the pleural layers. So, you've got this nice parietal layer here and the visceral layer, and you've got the pleural fluid, just blackness in between. Um, what looks a bit like pancake over here is just consolidated lung, lung that's just been squished together because of the fluid around. Okay. Um, and you describe uh, um, the ultrasound appearances of fluid as anechoic, black, echogenic, which is bright, uh, <coughs> septated, you see some fibrin in between uh, this black area, and complex is just anything that's not simple. Obviously, okay. Um, and transudates, like Anu has said this morning, um, they're typically anechoic, black, black. Um, but just to remember one point is that exudates can appear black as well. So it's kind of like you, you can hedge your bets. That it's probably going to be a transudate if it's all black, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's nothing else more sinister going on. Okay. So exudates, it can be black. Um, but if you see features like uh, septation, complex looking with debris, um, uh, or if it looks echogenic, then it's probably not just a simple pleural effusion. You've got to start thinking about, is there something else going on? Could it be an empire Um So in this picture here, I've got a nice picture of um, pleural effusion, and you can see this little wavy, fibrony bits there. So that's septated, okay? And then you can, uh, for empire yuma, uh, you get a thickening of the wall. So you get this black area of fluid here. And then this wall is thickened. Okay, and you get lung behind. So you've got your lung and pleura. You know, there shouldn't really be anything between the fluid. There shouldn't be anything this thick. So this is a sign of empire yuma. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing is a fluid color sign. Uh, don't always use it, but you can use it if you want. Um, so basically what we did, um, we just popped a Doppler onto the black bit, which you think is uh, pleural effusion. And can you see how quickly this red and blue is moving? It's probably moving about 60 beats per minute. It's probably the way, uh, the, how fast the heart beats. And now if you think about it, um, if you push through it, it will come back and forth, back and forth. So this is what's reflected in the Doppler, just detecting movement. But if it's something sort of solidly, like, I don't know, cheese, it, we push it. it doesn't really bounce back that much, so you won't get this signal here. Um, and if you're wondering, is it thickening of the pleura, is it consolidation, you can, you can pop the Doppler on and have a look to see if it's got this fluid color sign. All right. Now, moving on to pleural thickening, um, it says hypoechoic broadening, so it basically means where the pleura is supposed to be just thick and black. Okay, just here. Okay. So, um, so this is a 
a nice sort of normal bright line. And here, can you see the pleural, between sort of soft tissue and uh, the pleural, there's this sort of area of blackness that really shouldn't be there. And uh, if you look close enough, um, they'll suggest pleural thickening. Okay. Um, so pleuritis, for, if for any reason your pleural is sort of irritated, inflamed, rheumatoid, arthritis, or anything that causes them to be inflamed, um, you get interruption between um, the pleural lines. Um, Mouse is just oh sorry, mouse is just gone. Okay, so you get an interruption of the, of the lines. You might get something that pleural pleural, and then might just sort of stop. Okay, and uh, you might get plaques for patients who are exposed to asbestos before. Um, you might get some plaque thickening. They might calcify. They might not. Um, but you know, normally they would have other chest X-rays. They would have a history. Kind of expect to know what you're going to see. Okay, right. Um, okay, so next, moving on to pleural masses. Like I said, um, benign masses are kind of quite rare. So fibromas, lipomas, and neuromas. Um, for example, this is a lipoma, just against an pleura, pleura, and they've got some lung tissue here. Okay, not very common, not entirely common. Uh, probably more what you would see are malignant, just bad stuff, like mesothelioma, metastases, and lymphoma. Um, so, for example, if you look at a picture here, this is the example of a patient with a mesothelioma, and it's a bit of rib destruction as well. And you can just see pleura, 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 oops, sorry, pleura, 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 and then just mass and then pleura. And you can just see this sort of soft tissue nastiness going on in here. Okay, and um, in this picture, there's a bit of pleura fusion and there's a bit of thickening of the pleura. You can see that again, it's this sort of nasty, thick black stuff that shouldn't be there. Okay. And this is obvious, just plura, 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 thick plura, 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 and then just wham, just big mass here. Okay, so it's quite important when you see these things, just take multiple images, put some Doppler on if you're going to biopsy it, see how vascular it is. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the heart, um, like I said, I don't always see it. Um, so you've got a nice four chamber view here, you can see all the chambers very nicely. Uh, and then you've got your right ventricle here and a slightly bigger and slightly thicker left ventricle. And remember we saw the picture from before, which is sort of nice bright line around the heart. Now you've got a very temperamental mouse. Um, now you've got this uh, black sort of fluid between the pericardium and the heart, so that's sort of gross pericardial effusion. Okay, and you can try and turn it, turn your probe, and you scan things. You should always scan in both planes, and you turn the probe and try and look at it at the, at the angle. And you can just see this uh, the pericardial effusion here, more pericardial effusion there. Okay. Right, so moving on to um, infection within the lungs itself, lung parenchyma. Um, like I mentioned before, the pathology has to be pleural based to be visible. If you've got any air in between, you're done for, you can't see anything. Um, so features, the, um, the consolidated lung can look a bit like the liver. Um, some people call it hepatization of the lungs. It uh, doesn't mean it turns into the liver, it just looks a bit like it. Okay, so this is a picture of a uh, consolidated lung. Uh, and you can see this sort of bright, linear, echogenic lines. And those are your bronchioles uh, and just filled with air. Okay, um, anything that is air filled will be bright. So these are a bit like your pneumobilia, you get gas in. So it'll be a bit bright. Um, and another clue is that they'll be branching, so they sort of branch out. Um, and you might be able to see some anechoic tubular structure, basically just dark circles, dark tubes like here. Um, it could be vessels, um, in which case if you're not sure, just pop the Doppler on, have a look. Uh, or the other thing is it could be um, fluid-filled bronchial, so you start thinking about is it just sort of mucus plugging, could there be something more proximal obstructing it? Okay. Just sort of subtle signs. Um, and here's an example of if you just pop the vessel, pop do, uh, the Doppler on, and say, ah, that's a vessel. Okay. Um, but the appearance of this sort of look of the lung is not specific. It could be infection, which is quite common. It could be an infarction after PE. It could be cancer, bronchoalveolar <coughs> cancer, or it could even be hemorrhage. So it's just something to keep in the back of your mind, but probably most common would be infection. Okay, so cancer at um, again, it has to be quite peripheral to be visualized. Um, it's going to be well-defined uh, hypoechoic lesions like this one here. And uh, you can see a bit of enhancement behind. You just with the soft tissue, um, obviously it's got another window to go through quickly. 
And uh, this sort of location is probably amenable to biopsy, but you probably want it a slightly bigger to stop your needle from puncturing the pleura and getting a pneumothorax. Okay. Okay, and uh, last, lastly, pneumothorax. Um, we've all seen the normal lung sliding sign, but if we've got a pneumothorax, which hopefully you should be able to pick up on chest X-ray, but in ICU patients, you, they're normally taken supine, you might not actually see the air, the sort of two loosened lines. Um, so you've got to go for something more subtle, like the lungs doesn't really slide really much, um, and all these nice little comatose artifacts, um, which is basically, like I said, interlobular septic throwing off um, with uh, the artifacts, they're not there anymore. And uh, you can get these exaggerated horizontal vertical, uh, this horizontal artifact. They'll just be a lot more than usual because there's an extra layer of air in between. Okay. Um, but obviously, there's limitations to what you can use with the ultrasound. If you've got subcutaneous air, if you've got calcification, uh, <laughs> you've got emphysema, you know, it, 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 the limitation is to how much you can use this to detect pneumothorax, but quite useful in ITU, I would probably say. Um, so hydro-pneumothorax mixture of sort of fluid and air, you get this curtain sign. Uh, so again, with air, um, there will be... Uh, it will be blocking the ultrasound waves. So when they breathe in and out, air will rise to the top. Uh, depends on how you're lying them. And um, when they breathe in and out, this air will basically like a curtain just blocks everything. You can't see, you can't actually see um, uh, the, the rest of the lungs. So that's, a, that's a, just a sign. If you've got fluid and you've got this funny thing that just comes in and out, that's probably air. But uh, of course, there are other ways. It, it can raise a suspicion, and then you can go on to do other imaging if you want to double reconfirm. Okay, and um, that's it. Uh, good old Dr. Lean, and there are other references at the back.